Hey guys, what's up? It's Mikai. I'm back at it again with the episode 2 of the tower defense game in Scratch. So last time, let's go over what we did. We created the path, and the way we're doing that is with the pen tool. What we're doing first is constructing four path points right here. And we are adding one right here, one here, one here, and one at the end. And we're taking this pen tool, we're going through each path point, and just drawing to the next one. So pretty straightforward, although this may look a little bit intimidating. And today we're going to be adding a sprite to follow the path. This will be somewhat advanced. It'll include a little bit of geometry, but if you don't understand that, it's very easy. Just copy, copy along with, with, with what I'm doing, and you should be good. So let's start off with painting the sprite. Let's use this green color because it's a lot easier to see. And we'll put that in the center. And the first thing we need to do is create the clone. So we're going to say, for now, when flag is clicked, forever, wait one second, and then create a clone of myself. Then we're going to say, when I start as clone, the first thing we want to do is go to the first path point. So the way to get that is to grab this block right here, item one of path points X, and then bring item one of path points Y. The next thing to do after that is to create a private variable. This is going to keep track of which path point we're going to next. And to explain this briefly, the way it's going to work is our sprite is essentially just going to go to the first path point and move along and point towards the next one, point towards the next one and keep on moving, and then until it reaches the end. And that's what we're going to do for this episode. So we need to create this variable. We're going to call this next path point. We're going to make sure it's a private variable by clicking for this sprite only. And we're going to set this to 1, or next path point. We're going to set that to 1. Then we're going to drag in a repeat. And we don't use this too often, but the reason we're going to need it is because we're going to need to go through each one. So what we're going to do is repeat. We're going to bring in the length of path points x. This is going to tell us how many path points we have to go through. And we're going to change path points or next path point by one, so we can move to the next one. We are going to create two new blocks. Now this is can get a little bit confusing, although it should be relatively simple. We're going to create a new block. It's going to be called distance two, and we're going to add in a x input and a y input. These are going to hold the coordinates, uh, and, and we're actually going to call this calculate. So we, we can just call it get distance two x y. That should work perfectly. And what we're going to do is we're going to set a new variable. We're going to call this distance to next path point. Make this a private variable once again. And the reason we need this is because we need to go to the next path point. And then when the distance becomes less than 10 or some number like that, we need to move on. That's the best way to do it uh, that I've found. So what we need to do is we're going to set distance to next path point to the square root, and this is uh, the Pythagorean theorem, so if you don't know that, don't worry. If you do, follow along and you can use it, uh, but if not, just copy and paste. So the square root of, we're going to bring in a couple operators, so multiplication, ah, and then multiplication here, bring in a minus and a minus. We're going to bring in the x here and the y here. We're going to bring in the x position of this sprite and the y position of the sprite. And the next thing we need to do is just duplicate this here and duplicate this and put that there. So that's going to calculate the distance to the next path point. So what we need to do is immediately after changing the next path point, we need to calculate this distance. So we're going to call the block. We're going to say get distance to. And instead of using item 1, we're going to use the next path point, which thankfully we have stored in this variable. So we're going to calculate the distance to that next path point. And then what we need to do is point towards the next path point. And we're going to call this point towards. And we're going to bring in an x input and a y input once again. And this is going to be a little bit simpler in terms of the length, but it could be more confusing. Again, just follow along, and it shouldn't be too difficult. We're going to point two words. Uh, let's see. Um, point in direction. My bad. Uh, and we're going to bring in a plus operator. 
So we're going to bring in a plus operator here. We're going to bring in a times here, less than on the very right side. And then on the left side, we got to bring in this absolute value of this little block, very helpful. And then we need a divide. On the left side of the divide, it's going to be a subtract. And on the right side, it's also going to be a subtract. So we're going to bring in an x in here, a y in the next one. Oops. This can sometimes get annoying to use. And then right here. And we're going to do 180 right here. And we're going to make this a tan. There we go. And the next thing to do is to bring in this x position, bring that here, and bring in the y position and put it here. So take a look at that, both of those. Pause the video if you need. They can be a little bit confusing. So yeah, make sure you get those down. All right, so the next thing to do is to actually use these blocks, right? So we want to point towards the next path point so we can move to it. So we're going to drag in that block, point towards, and we're going to bring in these same two you know, little circular things. I don't really know what to call them, but this will get us the x coordinate and the y coordinate. So just remember, this could become confusing, but make sure to always drag in the y for the second one and the x for the first one, because sometimes you'll make a mistake there. The next thing we need to do is bring in a, another control block. It's going to be called repeat until. And let's move, let's zoom out for a second, move this out of the way, and then zoom back in. And what we're going to do is say, repeat until the distance to the next path point is less than 10. And if you remember, we stored that distance to the next path point in a variable, thankfully. And then what we're going to do is move towards it. And for now, we can just call this move 10 steps. And then calculate the distance again, right? Because we want to make sure we're not already there. So we're going to uh, use the block called get distance to, and then bring in these same two circular things here. So if we click the green flag, let's see what happens. Wonderful. It's working. This is great to see. And yeah, so I think one thing we need to do here is make it so that it's actually repeating. And I could be wrong about this. Uh, length of path point x minus 1. Let's see if that keeps on going to the end. Exactly. So what happened was because we're starting at 1, we were actually going way too far. And we're going to a fifth point, but obviously we only have four. So that was a problem, but it's all good now. And then what we need to do here is we're going to say repeat until and yes, perfect. All right, so this is looking great. The next thing I want to do very briefly is make it so that when the flag is clicked, we want to hide the original sprite, which spawns the clones. But then in each of the clones, we want to show. That way we don't have this weird thing on the right side. The next two things I wanted to do were pretty straightforward. They were just changing some colors. So in the set pen color two in our sprite one, we actually want to change this to a brown. I think that looks a lot better. So it just kind of looks like a path more. Uh, we're going to change that here, bring this down. And so we have this. And then this does look weird right now. But I want to make the background a nice green. So like that. And then drawing a rectangle. And we're going to make it a little bit darker because I think it should be darker. There we go. And then the next thing we need to do is turn this size into something like 70 because I think it should be smaller. And the next thing we want to do is change the path size to smaller as well. And so we're going to change it from set pen size to 60 to set pen size to 40. Let's see how that looks. I like a smaller path better because it's going to give us more room to place our turrets and to have a longer path. All right, I'm going to hide these two variables uh, in our sprite too. And we're going to call it a day. So thank you guys for watching this episode. I'll see you guys very soon with a part three on the tower defense game. Hope you enjoyed. Leave a like, subscribe, and see you guys next time. Peace out.